In this fly tying tutorial, I'm going to be tying my new nymph, the expert betas. This has been a super productive pattern for me recently. During our fall BWO hatches out here on our local Utah tailwaters. If you're a fan of the France fly, this is essentially a beta C dual hotspot French fly. It's great as a dropper fly under a dry dropper rig or nymphing under an indicator. I've been fishing it as an imitative pattern on my Euro nymphing rig and pairing it with some sort of attractor pattern, and that's been a great setup for me. If you're not a fly tire, they're available in my shop to purchase right now, or you can watch the rest of this tutorial and tie them up yourselves. Having the expert betas in your fly boxes is definitely synonymous with being a master nympher, so it's definitely satisfying to fish this pattern. Laid out here is all the materials you'll need to tie an expert betas. I'm tying them on Driftstone jig hooks and Driftstone slotted tungsten beads. My buddy Eric over at Driftstone provides the best value for high quality hooks and beads on the market. A 50 pack of beads will run you about seven bucks and a 50 pack of jig hooks will run you about eight bucks. And the quality truly rivals some of the top offerings out there from bigger brands. You can use code TROUTFLIES at checkout for a 10% discount on these high quality hooks and beads. In the vise, I've got a size 16 jig hook. Paired with it, I have a 2.8 millimeter black nickel slotted tungsten bead. To tie in our materials, I'm using 12 watt Semperfly Classic Wax Thread. This is a floral green color. For a tail, I'm going to strip off about half a dozen medium pardo Hoc de Leon fibers and get the tips aligned. To tie these in on the hook, I'm holding them on the near side of the hook and using thread tension to rotate them over to the top. You can also do a pin trap here. The tail fibers are a little too long for my liking here, so I'm pulling them to length. Doing this technique will also ensure they seat nicely on the top of the shank of the hook. I'm going to move our thread forward and snip off the butt ends. For a hot spot on the tail, I'm going to use a little section of pearl flashaboo and securing it to the near side of the hook. Once I get to the tail fibers, I'm gonna take two traveling wraps forward, make enough room for two wraps of this flashaboo. That'll be enough to make a small little hot spot towards the tail of the fly. Just gonna take a couple wraps and secure the slippery material and snip it off. For a body, I'm using microtubing. This is the brown olive color. I'm securing it and taking wraps all the way back to our red hotspot. Take the thread forward and then I'm using a lot of tension on the microtubing towards the back end and slowly letting off that tension. This will create a tapered body and give some nice segmentation. Once we reach our wraps to behind the bead, we're going to secure it with our thread. I'm going to take a couple of hard securing wraps here. It's a slippery material, so you really kind of want to crank down on it to make sure it doesn't slip out when you snip it off. For a wing case, I'm using a black goose biot. I'm going to snip off about a quarter inch off the tip. We're going to invert the hook in our vise. And since jig hooks ride hook point up, I'm going to put the wing case on the top of the hook. You can do it on the back if you want to do it like a pritagon, I just prefer mine this way. 
Just pull up on the goose pile as you wrap and that'll get it oriented properly on top of the shank of the hook. For a thorax, I'm using brown olive hair plus dubbin. It's a pretty uh, spiky dubbing. So I'm trying to create as thin a noodle as possible. This will create a nice buggy look to the thorax. And we'll just fill in our area in front of our wing case. And then take the goose file and fold it over. get it secured and then orient it how you want and make your securing wraps here I prefer not to rip the biot off I prefer to snip it because it leaves that little bit of tag end that makes it less likely to slip out we'll go into a six to eight to whatever turn whip finish you want to build up a thread hotspot at the front you can make it as thin or as thick as you want right there. Eight's about right for me. Snip off our thread and add a little bit of head cement to secure our thread wraps. And there you go. That's an expert betas. The nice Betas imitator. I encourage you to tie some up and check it out. I also do an alternate version with some uh, partridge fibers to add some legs if you want to slow the sink rate or add a little bit more movement to the fly. There we go. There's one. Oh, we got a double, dude. Okay. Well, did we lose the second one? No, he's still on. Okay, bottom fish first. Well, <laughs> that's a way to get, that's a way to get two, huh? <laughs> Not bad, okay. So we'll do fish to the net to count. Get the fly out here. Another fly is clear. So Birdie and my experimental betas, both those work. Yep. Oh, that might be a good one. Yep, that is definitely a good one. the bait as I am like horsing them in for an 18 inch fish. <laughs> 18, maybe, maybe 19. <laughs> it's a nice one guys. Too bad we can't enjoy it because we're doing an efficiency game. So you, you're lucky. You, well, let's not pin you in the tail though. <laughs> That's a good one, though. 